In today's video, I want to go over a list of formulas for different probability distributions. So let's talk about the binomial distribution. Here's the formula for it. So the probability of getting n successes in, let me say that again, the probability of getting x successes in n trials is going to be ncx, that's a combination, times p raised to the x times q raised to the n minus x. Now, p is the probability of a successful event. q is the probability that the event will fail. So q plus p is equal to 1. Therefore, q is 1 minus p. Now, you can write this formula like this. It's equal to n factorial. This is the combination formula. ncx is n factorial over n minus x factorial times x factorial, and then times p raised to the x, and then q to the n minus x. So this is the probability distribution. This is the formula for the probability of a binomial distribution. Now, the mean is equal to n times p. The standard deviation is equal to the square root of n times p times q. And keep in mind, q is 1 minus p. So those are the formulas that you need to know when you need to find the probability using the binomial distribution. Now, let's move on to a geometric distribution. So this represents the probability that the nth event will succeed. n is the number of the first successful trial. So for instance, let's say we have probability x equals 4. You're looking for the probability that the fourth event will be successful. That means the first three events will fail. So it's going to be q n minus 1 times p. So if we're looking for the probability that the fourth event will be successful, the probability that the first event will fail is q. The probability that the second event will fail is q times the probability that the third event will fail is q. And then the probability that the fourth event will succeed is p. So when you plug in 4 for n, you're going to get I'll put it here. 4, I mean, q raised to the 4 minus 1 times p, which is q to the third times p, which is what we have here. But this is the formula for finding the probability of a geometric distribution. Now, there's more formulas associated with this. To find the probability that x is greater than n, it's equal to q raised to the n. The probability that x is greater than or equal to n is going to be q raised to the n minus 1. And the probability that x is less than or equal to n is going to be 1 minus q raised to the n. And the probability that x is less than n is 1 minus q raised to the n minus 1. By the way, you could find all of these formulas in the formula sheet below this video in the description section. That formula sheet is going to have a ton of formulas associated with probability. The variance is equal to 1 over p times 1 over p minus 1. The mean is 1 over p. So the variance, you can also write it as the mean times the mean minus 1. The standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So it's the square root of this, the square root of that. But you can also simplify this expression into this form. The square root of 1 minus p over p. And keep in mind, q is 1 minus p. So that still applies here. So those are the formulas you need to know when dealing with a geometric distribution. Now let's talk about 
the Poisson distribution. To find the probability for this distribution, the probability that x is equal to n is going to be mu n e to the negative mu over n squared. Now, you might also see this formula like this. It's also equal to lambda n e to the negative lambda divided by n factorial. So notice that the mean mu is equal to lambda in this problem. The mean is also equal to n times p. The variance is also equal to n times p. And the standard deviation is the square root of mp, which is also the square root of lambda. Now the probability for Poisson distribution that x is greater than n is equal to 1 minus e to the negative u. And then this is summation from x equals 0 to n, u to the n over n factorial. By the way, for those of you who want to see example problems, how to apply some of these formulas, feel free to check out the links in the description section below. I'll be posting other videos where you could see how you can apply some of these formulas. Now for the Poisson distribution, if you need to find a probability that x is less than or equal to n, it's going to be e to the negative mu. And then we have sigma x is equal to 0 all the way to n. This part is going to be the same. By the way, these two should both be mu. They're the same variable. I wrote it a little differently. Now, let's talk about uniform distribution. So this is going to be f of x. This is a, this is b, and let's put two additional points, c and d. So the area under the curve from A to B is going to be equal to 1. The area is also length times width, or base times height. The base is basically the width of the rectangle. So that's B minus A. The height is F of X. And the area, the total area of this region, is defined to be 1. So if you sum for x, f of x, you need to divide both sides by b minus a. So you get 1 over b minus a is equal to f of x. So for uniform distribution, f of x is 1 over b minus a. So whenever you need to calculate the area, it's base times height. The base, it can vary depending on how much of the area you want to calculate. It could be from A to C, A to D, the base can vary. The height, which is f of x, that's 1 over b minus a. So the area, which is going to basically be the probability, let's say if we want to find a probability that x is between a and c. So we want to find a probability of this region here, which is basically the area of that region. So the base, which is basically the width of that, the shader region. By the way, you could write this as B over B minus A. So B is the base or the width of the shader region. And in this example, it's simply C minus A. The bottom part is going to be the same. It's just the total width, B minus A.
Another way in which you could think of this formula is you're comparing the ratio of two widths. So think of it as the partial width divided by the total width. So from C to A, that's the partial width of the shaded area. B to A, that's the total width, or B minus A. So once you take the ratio of those two widths, that's going to give you the probability of that region, which is basically the area of that region. So let's say we want to find the probability that X is between C and D. So I'm going to shade it in red. So the width of the shader region is going to be D minus C divided by the total width of the entire rectangle, and that's B minus A. I'll give you another one. Let's say if we want to find the probability that X lies somewhere between C and B. So here's the partial width C from B. So that's equal to B, which is on the right, minus C, which is on the left, divided by the total width of B minus A. So when you see it from that perspective, it's going to be very easy to write the formulas that you need in order to determine the probability where X is located. Now, for a uniform distribution, here are some other formulas you need to know. The mean is going to be the arithmetic mean of A and B. It's the sum of A and B divided by 2. The standard deviation is B minus A divided by the square root of 12. Again, you could find all of these formulas in my formula sheet in the description section. Now, the next distribution we're going to talk about is the exponential distribution. So we have f of x on the y-axis. Let's say this is n, a, and b. Let's say we want to find a probability that x is less than or equal to n. So basically the area of the shaded region on the left. Let's call that a sub l. This is going to be equal to 1 minus e raised to the negative lambda times n, where lambda, lambda is the rate parameter. So if you know the mean, you could easily find lambda. The mean is 1 over lambda, or in other words, you could say lambda is 1 over mu, 1 over the mean. The variance is 1 over lambda squared. And f of x. The function for this graph is equal to lambda e times negative lambda x. By the way, if you integrated this function from 0 to n, you would get this expression. So the area of the shaded region is the definite integral from a to b f of x dx where a to b could be from 0 to n, or it could be something else. But that's how you can get this formula, by integrating this one. So I'll write it for you. So if we integrate from 0 to n, lambda e negative lambda x dx, it will give you this formula. For those of you who have taken calculus, you could try that yourself and prove it. Now, let's say if we want to find the area to the right of n. So the probability that x is equal to or greater than n, it's equal to e negative lambda n. And you could prove it using the integrals. So you can integrate it from n to infinity because it keeps on going forever f of x dx, which is lambda e lambda x. 
If you integrate that, it will give you this equation. Now, for the rest of the formulas for the exponential distribution, uh, feel free to check out the formula sheet in the links below. Also, if you want the formulas for the standard normal distribution, it will be in the formula sheet as well. So I'm going to stop the video here, and thanks again for watching.